Hello there, Cancers. Welcome to your July 2017 tarot reading. I want to wish you all a very happy birthday, and I hope you have a great time celebrating with loved ones, families, and friends, and, you know, put the past behind you so that you can move ahead for this year, okay? So I'm going to relay four important messages for you, and then we'll get the cards shuffled out and head into this month's reading, all right? Um, first of all, I'm feeling like some of you, you might be in your 30s, 40s, and I feel like, you know, you, you want to establish a family for yourself. You're trying to figure out, like, how can I meet the right person to have a family with, to have children with, to get married to, settle down with. And I feel like while you're doing all of these things, like, you know, trying to figure out, like, what's the best uh, course of action? What's the best thing I can do to move forward? Um... I feel that you're trying to stabilize your financial situation. You're trying to figure out your career prospects. And uh, all the, the finances, work and career, it's almost like it's, it's not stable enough. And that's why the relationship partners that you've had are not stable. And I feel like you might have been, you know, thinking p about your past for the past like four years, for example. And you might also make that correlation that, okay, when I was in this job and I was really stable, the relationship that I had was very stable. And then as soon as there was shifts in my income, in my work, in my foundation, the relationships start going all right. And I, I'm seeing like some of you are doing a lot of reflecting as well on the past, thinking about the past, thinking about choices, decisions that you have made that have either created a lot of fluctuations in your financial situation or that might not have landed you with the right relationship partner with whom you can, you know, build a future with, with whom you can get married, have children and stabilize your life. So there's a lot of ruminating nostalgia for the past. There's a lot of thoughts going through your head as it relates to, you know, what could I have done differently? How should I move forward and do things differently? And um, as I'm doing this, today is the 25th of June, and I feel like a lot of you are still heavily, heavily feeling the impact of the new moon in your sign that is happening this weekend, so June 23rd to the 25th. And uh, what it creates is that it brings about, you know, new moons brings about new energies and new ways for us, especially if it's in your sign, to express yourself, to express your emotional needs and to be a lot more direct and to be a lot more sensitive with your communication. And you are naturally a very caring, nurturing, sensitive sign. But I feel like you are also, you know, uh, very like, you, inside you is this burst of passion where if you feel your security is threatened or if you feel very emotionally tied up with another person you might behave in a way that is not altogether uh, rational so exercising loving detachment is something that you're going to need to do moving forward and at the same time being able to directly communicate and thoroughly communicate what your needs are, what your boundaries are, and what your expectations are with other person, with other people that you're dealing with, is going to be very crucial for you to create and mold the relationship to your liking. Okay, so the second message that I have here is, um, it feels to me as if in your work sector, a lot of um, people have moved on. So like um, people that might have stayed there for a really long time, they're starting to shift. They're starting to, you know, look outside or look elsewhere for new opportunities. So basically what that denotes is that while you're feeling this sense of like, oh, I'm the only one here um, or I'm the only one here now. On the other hand, there are a lot of positions opening up in that department because people are leaving. There are also a lot of new uh, positions opening up mainly because you know they need to fill their vacancies so it is prime time for you guys to start um, looking for work to you know try to shift gears into a lateral movement move vertically like uh, apply for a higher 
position with more responsibilities, with greater um, financial security. And I feel like, you know, some of you, if you're staying with the present company, for example, it shows employee loyalty when everyone is leaving in droves and you're staying on, you're sticking through it. I feel that it can be good for you because they, they see that you are someone committed and the opportunities are opening up. So why not apply for a lateral move, okay? Um... I do see sadness and nostalgia when it comes to work, but I do sense as well that uh, you are going to be moving past difficulties as it relates to work situations that might have been a little bit tenuous, and shifting away from it is going to be very good for you, okay? So if the, if the situation has been tenuous, shifting away from it is going to be very good for you. And then likewise, if a bunch of people are leaving, there's going to be those vacancies that needs to be filled. And I feel like they need to be filled immediately. So you're in a good position to put your feelers out there, to start applying, to put in your letter of interest. So doing things in a direct way, I feel it's going to yield direct result for you financially. Um, the second message, or I guess the third, third message that I have here, um, I'm seeing a lot of you are waiting on a decision from an official channel. And I do sense it might be related to health, such as waiting on a clean bill of health, waiting on test results, waiting on a prognosis. If you have a family member, for example, that's dealing with some health issues, I feel like you're there holding their hands and, you know, waiting for the doctor, waiting for the lab results, waiting on results. And then others of you waiting on like court cases, legal issues pertaining to health issues. So it could be, you know, um, investigations or something like that into like um, work compensation, for example, or trying to find a, uh, trying to have a clean bill of health, such as like um, if you're applying and there's a security clearance and they need, you know, you to be physically, emotionally, psychologically sound in order to get a job, then I feel like you're waiting on those results so that you can start applying. OK, so I, I feel like a lot of waiting here and it concerns your health and then it also concerns like a clean bill of health. So that's coming through. Drug testing does come to mind. And I feel like if you're applying for work steer away from you know recreational drug use because I feel like unexpectedly they might ask you to you know do some type of drug testing prior to employing you so you might you know be the ideal candidate and if that's the one thing that um, can turn the situation around for better or for worse you might want to lay off those recreational drug use you know for this month okay um, I'm also feeling as well with the last message here, it feels to me like, um, it just feels to me as if a lot of you, the past four years, let's talk about the past four years, you were in a relationship with a person and um, there, you know, um, some of you might have been young and there were a lot of things that needed to happen. So it feels almost like it was karmically ordained. Like these things needed to happen. How we deal with the energy, what we do, what we say, those are all up for, you know, overall free will, right? But I feel like these things needed to happen to really test your resolve, to really test your ability to express yourself in a manner and to really test the capabilities of how and whether or not you are able to take care of a situation, whether or not you're able to sacrifice for another person, whether or not you're, you know, um, I guess like growing and expanding to the best of your capabilities. So I feel like a lot of things happen that really tested your determination, your ability to sacrifice, how how invested you are either in a relationship partner because I feel like some rough things have happened and um, did you stay in it try to work to resolve it try to make it better 
Or did things get so rough that you had to leave and, you know, go elsewhere and, and find new relationship partner? So I feel like there was this period where you really, you know, these are not easy decisions that you made at that time. You made the decision. And I feel like a lot of you are left wondering, you know, what if, what if I had stayed? What if, would things have been easier for me? Should I go back to it and try to fix it? Should I try to get closure from it? Should I go back and give the other person closure? Or should I go back just to alleviate, you know, the, the guilt that I'm feeling right now? Should I make amends? Should I try to repair the relationship? Should I do something else? And I'm feeling those of you who are dealing with a little bit of guilt for whatever reason, okay? Uh, based on how you communicate it, based on whether or not you should have stuck around or whether or not you could have done more. I feel like for a small minority of you, yes, you could have done more. I, I do feel that. But I also feel that you were very uh, conflict avoidant in that situation and you could have done more, you should have done more, but you didn't feel like it was in your, it's like your place. So it's almost like you didn't want to step on toes you didn't want to to overextend yourself, like impose yourself upon another person. So I feel that was the case. And then others, you might have overimposed on the other person. And I feel like it, it created a little bit of an emotional rift between you and another person. So moving forward for this month, it would be in your best interest, I feel. You know, I always tell clients, you know, things happen for a reason. Take the lessons, the good and the bad, but it, uh, more importantly, life is about learning. Take the lessons from the past and apply it to your present situation. We go through life, we accumulate these um, important milestones, these experiences, because honestly, one thing will lead to the next, okay? So we're supposed to learn this here so that the second time around, we do it differently, and then we are supposed to learn it from this situation. So then the next time around, in a different context, in a different capacity, we can make a better, well-informed decision based on everything we've done in the past. So we reflect on things. We don't wallow in self-pity. We try to move on. And I do sense that for many of you, moving on basically means, you know, doing things differently, overcoming past hang-ups, overcoming your inclination, your natural inclination to shy away from conflict, you know, so tackle things head-on, being a little bit more direct with your energy, and uh, rather than conjuring up like a million plans, a million ways to make money, a million ways to, you know, um, move ahead, narrow down your options so that they're chewable so that they're manageable so moving on ahead with these things where you can be a lot more practical a lot more directed with your energy it is going to be so much better for you okay so this video is already running a little bit long but let me just um, start with your reading here so first of all cancers this thing came screaming out okay so let me talk about this this is a new job. This is a new income generating opportunity for you. And it's going to be very, very good for you. Not only does it bring about a lot of financial windfall, a lot of uh, wealth, it's also going to drastically change your lifestyle. So this is a very, very good card to have. A lot of you have been in situations, especially work situations, if um, I, I honestly feel like the work situation for some of you is smoothing itself out. But for those of you who have left work and have been kind of like disappointed, struggling with financial, you know, like uh, financial hardships, financial fluctuations where um, one month can greatly fluctuate and be different from the next. Your income uh, stream, for example, has been very inconsistent and you're just like, I want stability, I want to be able to settle down, I want to have a family, I want to have that nest egg for myself. I feel that you're tired of, you know, bumbling around trying to do work that is just mundane and that doesn't give you that financial freedom or that financial security. I do feel this is the month where 
interviews with other people, you you are going to be very well received. People will really um, see your heartfelt, you know, like uh, desire to work for them. They're going to see your motivation and they're going to see all of these things. So you have positive reception coming through with other people. You have opportunities here to wow other people and you have opportunities as well to really make an impression on other people where they will really celebrate, you know, your strengths and they will really um, feel how committed you are to working for them. And so the end of struggles, the end of financial worries, I feel like it's coming in for many of you for this month. Um, some of you could be getting like major, major financial windfalls here as it relates to health that I mentioned earlier. Others of you can get major, major financial windfalls as a result of, you know, should I or should I not leave this marriage? And I feel like there might be some alimony, there might be child support, custody issues, you know, where you are going to be able to have a lot more financial security. So money coming through. Um, releasing a property if it's been a financial drain on you specifically releasing a property okay and others um, getting out of a marriage or a relationship that was very financially draining and as a result it frees you up to look for jobs it frees up your energy to devote to t practical tangible things that are a lot better for you okay long term um, I'm also sensing for some of you, there might be a job on the offing here that might require a move, okay? So I feel like where you're living now, it's all nice and good, but I do sense there is, it's kind of like an ending of a cycle and it's going to allow you to um, really think about what's the next location for me? Where uh, can I settle so that I can be able to purchase property so that I can be happy? so that I can be, you know, secure. And I'm sensing some of you are kind of like erring away from city life, you know, congestion, a lot of people, high property value, and you're moving or shifting into a location where there is a lot less hectic energy. You're further away from civilization. Property value, cost of living is a lot cheaper, and you're going to be able to get like, you know, a really big property and feel really good about, you know, the fact that you don't have to deal with neighbors, the fact that you have your own space and no one can encroach upon it, okay? So there's huge, huge um, property housing uh, changes that will be very positive for you. And especially if you're purchasing property, I do feel like, you know, this is a card overall about major, major decisions, signing on the dotted line, contracts being finalized as well. And it's going to allow you to start a new phase in your life. Okay, so it looks very, very positive overall. Um, the other thing that I want to mention as well is... Um, uh, this was an energy that I felt last year for you guys. And if it hasn't happened, it's it's very similar. It, if it hasn't, ha hasn't happened for many of you last year or it wasn't done for many of you last year, it's important to do this now, okay? So first of all, we have this situation of reassessment, okay? Figuring out where we've been, where we're trying to go, and how we can realistically get there. And I do feel this is a situation that concerns your relationship sector, um, friendships as well, and in particular, love relationships. I mentioned the energy for last year in 2016 was you needed to close some doors on some people because they're not good for you. They bring you a lot of problems. They bring you very shady energies. It's like clandestine types of movements okay so I feel like either they bring you opportunities for a get quick uh, get rich quick schemes or they bring you like very shifty shady um, work opportunities that put you in precarious situation where you might need to distort the truth where you might you know there, there was big big money to be had from it but was it serving your greater good? Was it good for you overall? And was it something that you, you know, did you have regrets doing it? Because I feel like there were regrets as it relates to the people that you were associating with, okay? And 
breaking away from that, finding people that are better quality, I feel, is going to be really important. Now, cancers, um, going back to what I mentioned, I feel like you are a big, big, major team player, okay? Like, you, you like to be around other people, and you also like to, I feel like you, you like to interact with a lot of people. You're naturally cu very curious about other people. You're, you're curious about where they've been, where they come from, especially if they're um, ethnically, linguistically different from you. You like to talk to them. You like to mingle. You like to find out what t makes them tick. You like to, you know, learn about other people. You're naturally very people-oriented. You go about it in a very shy way, so people don't know that. But I feel like you're, you like other people. And I also feel like in the process of being well-liked, being popular, being part of the in-crowd... Was that making you happy, okay? Was that something that you want, like, you know, quantity over quality? Was that what you wanted? And then also, the people that were around you, did they bring with them positive energy? Or did they bring with them bad habits? Like, drinking too much, you know, reckless behavior, um, a lot of, a lot of, I, I'm, I'm sensing, you know, overall, this is a card about addiction, Overcoming past addictions to people, to vices, unhealthy things in your life. So I do sense overall that a lot of you have closed some doors. And I'm, I'm really glad to see that. But at the same time, you feel a little bit isolated. And you feel a little bit lonely. And you feel like you're very much alone in your struggle. But you are going to brand, you're going to continue on. And in the process of, you know, feeling that sense of like isolation, right? Your mind, our, our minds as social creatures, we are always going to revert back to the past, you know. The past relationship that was really good, that was very, very stable, where the other person really loved you. And then we're always going to revert back to family. Were there a lot of um, instability in our family lives? Did our parents provide us with the best foundation and structure? Can we blame them for, you know, how our lives have turned out now? Yes and no. I feel like you're going to be grappling with a lot of past things, things from the past, whether they be good or bad. You're going to look at them and figure out how they have shaped you, the person you are right now, and how they are contributing to you as a person, where you're trying to go, where you're headed, and whether or not you're ready. So I feel like, you're comfortable. Some of you might be comfortable where you are, you know, socially, financially. You have a new big, big opportunity, and you're just like, this big opportunity, it seems to me like it requires a relocation. It seems to me like it requires drastically leaving behind everything that you're comfortable with right now and shifting forward. You might need to leave friends behind. You might need to leave, you know, existing lovers. You might need to do something very drastic and you're not really sure if you're ready for it. So the thing here is um, cancers. Do things differently as, and especially don't stay because of financial, you know, insecurity. Okay, so steer away from this state of mind where you are making decisions um, from a space where you are not financially stable and especially any opportunity that allows you to move away from this financial instability, definitely take it because it is going to be very good for you. So you might have like, I'm sensing um, people leaving in the, on the job, right? And you get along with them and everyone's telling you, hey, come with us, go to this next company with us. But then there are new positions opening up in because everybody's leaving. And so you're just like, do I tell them that I'm aiming for their position or do I leave with them? I feel that you're going to stay and aim for a higher position. And I'm also sensing as well that either way, new jobs are coming through. And I feel that it's going to be very good for you guys, okay? I guess like the takeaway message for this month here is aim to do something different. Because everything that was done in the past, it just feels to me like it, it, it didn't work out too well there were a lot of like idealism illusions of grandeur and you might have gotten involved 
in situations and I feel like you know get rich quick or situations that really fed the ego but it was very spiritually empty and so you need to find something that is a lot more spiritually nurturing spiritually fulfilling for you and working towards that without fears of like am I doing things wrong um, am I on the right track I feel like you're on the right track right now but the decision that you need to make it, it needs to resonate on a higher level it needs to speak to you spiritually okay and um, I feel like separating separating the, the the spiritual from the physical that's very very important okay so aim for people as well that are a lot more spiritually nurturing for you and I feel like it's really important for you to think back, you know, when was the last time I felt that spiritually nurtured by another person or by another, uh, a specific event or a specific situation and aim to do more of those things and especially aim to be around those types of people. All right. So let me see here what's in store for you guys for love and relationships. I'm getting a lot of interracial couples, which I feel is a really dynamic, great thing, mainly because, you know, we learn a lot from people who are different. Interracial doesn't always mean we're culturally different. You know, we can be in the same country, growing up with the same experiences, and we just happen to look differently. But I feel like there's a lot of that, and it brings about very, very strong physical attraction because, you know, opposites do attract or people who are different, they do attract each other. Um, I'm also sensing for many of you, you have somebody in mind. There's somebody that is capturing your attention. And this person is really popular. Very, very popular, really dynamic. They seem to have everything in order. Great life, great career, a lot of financial stability. And they're very easy to talk to. And they, I feel like they're, they're, they open up with everybody. They open up with, they can open themselves up to anybody. Like they, they're popular. Okay. Actually, I'm going to pull out one card for you because we have two kings here, which is always nice to see. But let's see what's going on here. Okay, so we've got another court card. I am going to pull out one more. This is strange. Okay. So, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Let me talk about you singles. Okay, so people who are single, we have the great love that's coming in, okay? So we have here the Ace of Cups, which basically means, you know, um, usually it means carrying a torch for somebody, really liking someone, digging somebody, wanting to build a relationship from scratch with somebody. And I mentioned earlier, you've got your eyes on this. This is the magician. And the magician is basically someone who is, um, I, I feel like they have a, they, they know how to live life, okay? If you look at this person, he's got a martini in one glass, in one hand. He's got a sword in the other. Great communicator, great orator. Um, they might be in the public limelight. I'm seeing a big salesman, lobbyist, for example, salesman, somebody he, that needs to convince other people, that knows how to wine and dine the, the people they like knows how to persuade and knows how to, it's really intelligent, knows how to um, communicate very well. The sword that he's holding here, it basically indicates to me somebody who's uh, very, very witty, very cunning, intelligent. 
And then on the other hand, he's holding, you know, the wands and also the, the pentacles. This is somebody who's got a lot of financial security, okay? They're, they're in some type of a high-powered job, and I feel like this is somebody that captures your imagination, and I feel that some of you are really, really digging this person here. It's almost like because you're a water sign, I feel almost like you're offering this person your love. You're offering. It's like they, they've got you wrapped around their fingers. And I don't feel like it's bad. I just feel that you really have somebody that you're interested in. Singles, get out there this month and start dating. I feel that you're going to have a really amazing time with at least one person that you're dating, okay? It could be this person here where the conversation flows naturally, where things just, you know... Um, get off to a running start because there's a lot of chemistry here so that's for singles okay um, for others let me talk about this this weird combination that came out first of all we have here the king of coins this is an earth sign a Taurus a Virgo or a Capricorn okay and this is somebody that I feel is really um, th they're saying like gunning for you and I don't usually get that message with earth signs, but I feel like this is somebody that shows up very nicely dressed and they're just like, hey, do you want to get back together with me? That's what I'm sensing. It might be an ex. And um, it's linked up here with the king of cups. So I feel like it might not be altogether like an earth sign, but it's somebody that exhibits these qualities. They, they look really nice and, you know, they, they might in the past shower you with a lot of affection, a lot of gifts, a lot of trinkets. They're also very emotionally supportive. You know, they make sure that you're fed. They make sure that you're clothed. They make sure that you're warm. And they really, when you're sick, they really call and check up on you and they might physically be there to take care of you. And I'm also sensing here. Knight of Swords, okay, so we have three court cards, so I feel like this is a person that you have moved away from, they're dynamic and exciting and nurturing, but I do sense that some of you got like, you know, if it's a relationship partner, you were trying to move on to better things, or you were trying to secure your financial foundation, but I also feel there's an element of you possibly dating a lot of really good people and not appreciating them for what it's worth because you're getting this cold feet where you have like all the other options that you're looking at too and you're just like I'm going to go ahead and explore all the other options never mind that these people really gave me you know security and love and commitment I feel like you you were kind of like chasing after somebody possibly an unrequited love and you left some really good beautiful people behind on the quest for this and I feel like that reality has really dawned on you that you were out chasing you know um, pipe dreams while these people were really committed to you okay I'm sensing some of you might have had a lover in the past um, it, it might be these qualities mixed together, okay? So like uh, earth, air, and water. So possibly, you know, um, Gemini, Taurus moon, and, you know, Scorpio sun, for example. Gemini rising, Taurus moon. So like this, this combination, somebody exactly with this combination. Very, very committed, but I feel like they might not communicate their needs very well. They might not communicate their needs very well. And then on top of that, they are very, um, a little bit more like on the, um, I want to say even you perceive them to be a little bit more extravagant and a little bit more too financially focused. And they, they didn't have that time for you emotionally. I just feel like they weren't emotionally expressive or uh, emotionally like verbally expressive and so it was hard to form a relationship with this person so I feel like you had to go but you're thinking about them and you know as well that I want to find somebody like this from the past because that was a really good relationship so I feel like you're trying to find another person like this okay um let's talk about the past we have here the nine of wands and we have here the high priestess and um the Nine of Wands basically indicates a situation where um, somebody 
I feel like this can be you or the other person. And I'm sensing this might be you, Cancers. This is a card overall that basically indicates um, a lot of hardships and pain have to happen for us to learn sympathy, for us to learn humility, for us to really be able to put ourselves in another person's shoes because it opens up our heart chakra, right? A lot of the times when we are at a very, very low point in our lives, it allows us to really sympathize, empathize with another person's pain. And we can't really get to that point to truly empathize unless we have experienced it, okay? So like I said before, things do happen for a reason because as humans, as spiritual creatures embodying, you know, um, trapped inside this physical body, we need to experience worldly pains, physical, emotional, in order for us to learn, in order for us to grow, in order for us to activate our chakras. And I feel like that's what happened for you guys in 2016. And I feel like some of you needed to close some doors and others of you left those doors open hoping for, you know, that ex to come back, hoping for the, the person to come back around. And I also feel some of you have experienced this and now you're at a point in your life where you start to, your eyes are open. Not only is your heart chakra open, your eyes are open. You're starting to see things, kind of like the, the veil is lifted here with the high priestess. It's like things are no longer... That sense of idealism, it, it, it feels like it, it, it escaped you. It needed to leave the picture so that you know what you have and that you don't go chasing after pipe dreams, okay? I'm sensing a few people um, like floating around dating one person after another, dating multiple people at the same time, and um, possibly learning some karmic lessons associated with that and I'm very sorry to relay this but I feel like that might have happened for some of you in the past and uh, there's this energies about you know karma coming back around so please don't put yourself in that situation okay don't put yourself in that situation because I feel like there were information here revealed and it really hurt you but also it, it just tore the other person apart, the one that really loved you and that really cared about you. So I feel like there was information that came into the light and it really opened up your eyes and it really made you, you know, conscientious about what not to do in the future. Okay, so stick with this energy. Learn what not to do in the future so that you don't make the same mistakes, okay? And so as a result of this, many of you, are taking a major, have taken a major hiatus from uh, dating. So this is the Four of Swords, and the Four of Swords is rest and recuperation. Okay, so this basically means, you know, taking a little bit of a break or taking a little bit of a communication break from another person too because there were a lot of arguments, there was a lot of strife, and there was just a lot of, like, empty promises overall. And so while you're doing this unexpectedly, you're just like, oh, I'm not dating right now or I'm going to keep myself, you know, occupied on my um, work game, on my money game, on my, you know, career game. And unexpectedly, you're scoping out a person that you really, really like, that really catches your fancy, that you feel like, okay, I can, you know, I, I want to start a family. I want to... Um, I, I want to, you know, be able to have children. I want to be able to get a property. I want to be able to settle down and have a life with this person. So crowning this reading is something that you're thinking about. I have, have here the Wheel of Fortune, which is things turning around for the better. This is the month. The sun is in your sign. We just had a new moon for you, Cancers. It's a do-over for you guys. And you're attracting a lot of people, a lot of luck, a lot of blessings. And I feel that this is the month where, you know, you innately, intuitively, energetically feel this vibration of new energy that's in store for you. So your luck is changing. Things are going to turn around magnificently for the better. And we have as well the Ten of Pentacles, which is a solid foundation that can be had with another person. Okay? So I'm sensing here that... Um, 
Last message, um, if you are dating an earth sign, a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn, okay, sun, moon, or rising, there's an element here about you accumulated a lot of wealth with this person, but I feel like there's a little bit of a energy where you are um, attracted to somebody outside of the relationship. It's very fleeting. Do not change your plans based on that because I feel like that attraction is very uh, fleeting. That attraction was not, it, it, it doesn't feel to me like it's solid. So learning from the past, don't make the same mistakes and especially, you know, don't hurt the people that hurt you. Okay, just be very, very careful about that. Just the law of reciprocity, the law of karma, the law of fortune is turning in your favor. So do the right thing, okay? Singles, really, really good time overall to start dating. People who are coupled up, you are going to run into snags in the road, okay? So just uh, keep high, be high-minded. Express yourself. We have here the Ace of Swords. This is self-expression. Being very clear when we communicate, trying to get to the truth and trying to um, resolve conflict, Okay. So, Cancers, I do wish you all the best. Um, ha very, very happy birthday to you guys. And I do wish you the best for this month, okay? Take care of yourself. I feel like things are really, really turning for the better. Things are turning for the better. Um, aim to do the right thing. Don't resist this energy, okay? Because it's pushing you towards your higher self. And that's always a really good area to be in when we are divinely guided divinely protected and we feel like we have to make hard decisions but they're going to steer us into the better light okay into the light or into a better future all right take care of yourself i wish you the very 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 best and i apologize for doing yours kind of like second to last um but you know the video is still on time i hope so i wish you the best okay take care bye bye